and WB. In this video, I want to cast some dice out of resin. So first I need to make a mold. I have here a D20, and this one actually has a symbol on the 20 spot. It's opposite one. And I'm going to measure a sprue so that I can have some place to pour the resin later, and then make the the mold out of silicone that I have. So first, what I'm going to do is m measure this face, and I'm going to go in a little bit so that there's some room for hot glue. It's about seven millimeters. And then I have this gushers piece of plastic cardboard, I mean, and I'm going to cut a triangle that acts as a dowel so that when I mold it, it will have a place for the resin to pour. So this is what I want my mold to look like. The die will sit here. The sprue, or little dowel that I'm about to make out of cardboard, will go from here. And then all of this will be the actual silicone that I'll pack in. And I want it to be this big, and I'm going to glue the sprue to the die and then to the table. So I will have a flat surface with which to pack the silicone around it, and then when I cast it, I'll turn it upside down and pour in the resin from this side, with which will hopefully mean that the bubbles will end up in this spot, and because I don't have a pressure pot to collapse the bubbles, and then I can burn them off at the top, and then have a sprue that I can clip off and then polish the die itself. And I'm going to cover up this entire face because that means I'll later be able to carve my own symbol in, in the 20 spot. So here, this section is about 20 milliliters, millimeters long, which I have uh, copied over to this piece of cardboard. And I'm going to carefully cut it out with a razor blade. And if I go like that, then you can bend it out this way. And then you have something to cut on this side. And so now, I'm going to cut along those lines that I drew, which means I can bend them in straight lines, and then I can glue this to the die itself. So I'm going to apply some hot glue on the seam, close it, and hold it until it dries. Once it's dried, I then can place some hot glue on one side. It's stuck. Which lets me put it on the 20 face. Directly to the die. This die is a bit bigger than my other sets, and I have counting dice, but this one is the correct numbering system. So with this setup, we are now ready to go mold the silicone around this shape to create our silicone mold, which we'll then be able to pour resin in through this side. So it's time to make the mold around the die itself. And I'm going to do that with silicone caulking. So this stuff, uh, King of Random actually did a video about this. In order to make proto-putty, we can use this 100% silicone caulking. And this was five bucks at the grocery store, uh, Walmart, I think it was. And I'm going to mix it with cornstarch, which makes it pliable, but still tacky. Not tacky, I mean. And I'm going to actually mix in some water-based food dye and mix it together before adding the cornstarch with these craft sticks. And then I'm going to stick it to another plate. I got some more. And glue it down. And then I can pack the, the proto-putty around it in order to make the mold itself. So you're going to want to do this outside or in a well-ventilated area. I have moved outside. If you can hear any cars driving past, please forgive me. So I'm going to start by mixing together the caulking with the coloring, just so it's nice and you can tell the difference. I'm going to snip this out. And then I'm going to break the seal 
so that it can actually flow. I hope I have broke the seal. There we go. So I think that might be enough. And I'm going to take some of this food coloring and mix it in. And I can smell the acetic acid already. So that's the main component in the smell of vinegar. And that is why I am doing this outside and dealing with all of the different rovers driving around. So that was just a single drop. <laughs> Whoa. Oh man. <laughs> And I'm going to take that as all right, and then take a new plate with some cornstarch and roll it around for a little while. So I'm going to scrape this in. and then mix it around with the stick first. Oh man, this is very strong. And that way, when I start kneading it together with my hands, it's not going to stick to my fingers all the time. Because I have done this before, and it is terrible getting it on your fingers. I do say that uh, I've heard washing your hands with vinegar or baking soda or something like that to uh, react the the rest of the acetic acid is helpful if you want to get it out of your hands so this is good enough that i can then get all my hands and i'm just going to knead this together until it becomes a putty consistency and already this is much better uh I'll put up a picture of what my hands looked like after I tried the first time and didn't actually put the cornstarch on the outside before touching it. It was everywhere. So this is actually working pretty well. So this is a good consistency, at least I'm saying so, of the proto putty because it's not sticking but I can still mold it and it keeps its shape. All right, let's get that out of here. So this proto-putty is going to turn into silicone. That's very pliable. So now I'm going to get a new plate, put some hot glue on it, and stick this right on. Now that's cooled, I'm going to work the proto-putty a bit to make sure it hasn't cured because you don't have too much time in order to shape this. So now I'm just going to wrap it around and push it up, up the sides first. So I chose not to tear this into pieces because sometimes uh, with the other molds that I've tried it has meant that it didn't stick to itself and so it separated in spots that I didn't want it to. I'm going to make this into a little cube. I can feel it there. So one of the steps later is that I'm going to put this back together after I cut the die out. And I want a cylinder shape, actually, because that means I can apply pressure consistently on the outside. But this side should be flat so that it can sit on the table later. And now I'm going to let that cure. So this has cured over the past couple of days, and I'm going to cut it off and take out the die. But first I want to show you that I made this silicone mat at the same time. Its finish is not entirely uh, the best, but 
this used the rest of the canister and I am able to now have this mat that I can then pour resin on and then it'll peel off easily or anything else that wants to stick to it. So taking this right off the plate, oh yes I glued it. And here we can see the sprue that I filled with hot glue and glued to the plate. And the die is in there, and I know the orientation that the die has, so I can now cut it out just with another razor blade, because silicone is actually really nice to cut with this. Oh dear, I may have pulled out some of the paint of the symbol right there on the 20 side. So be careful when you're removing hot glue because it can take the uh, ink off. It looks pretty good, but I need to dig this out. There we go. So here's the D20 that I put in there. Uh-oh, it's still got some... Uh, silicone stuck to it, but I'm pretty sure adding the cornstarch helped this uh, come out with a good enough finish that it might work. We shall see. And so you can see the inside of the mold there is the correct die shape, but that surface finish is what we're really looking for. So to prep this for actually the resin pour, I'm just going to add some of this masking tape around the outsides to apply even pressure and keep the resin from seeping out of the edges, the cracks that I just cut. And because they're cut in the same uh, pass with a thin blade, they fit together well enough that I can just compress them and it should be a tight enough seal that the resin will be encompassed. So now that I've covered my mold in tape and crimped the corners as much as, as I can to provide pressure, now I'm going to mix up the epoxy, resin, excuse me. So I have me here some two-part resin, and I'm going to pour an approximately equal number amount of resin in each of these two cups. That looks about the right amount. So for pigment, I'm actually going to use white chalk. And I've just crushed this up. I don't have a mortar and pestle, so I crushed it up the best that I could and then put it in this baggie and I've been just working it. And this will add some flex because I never crushed it up uh, enough, but I'm thinking that's going to be a cool, and cool effect and it's bound to be interesting. So I'm adding to this to the most liquid of the two parts and a bit more than I think that I need because this is only half. That's interesting. Makes this little, I don't know what you call it, plaster. So I'm actually not very happy with this and I'm going to add a bit of food coloring. It is water-based but it should help a little bit. That was a single drop. And let's see how it looks. So with that added, I get this pretty strange color. Oh yeah, also, I'm using a cured, fully cured resin stick that I made with extra from my last pour as a stirring rod. That's one option. But i am got to say I'm not very happy with the color, but we'll see how it turns out. So I'm just going to pour this straight in to the other. And again, it is going to dilute the color, so we'll see how it goes. 
All right, now I'm ready to pour. And so I'm going to take this, which has turned into a turquoise-ish or cyan color. And I'm going to carefully pour it into my mold. Sweet. So now that this is full, and I'm fairly sure that it has no more air bubbles inside, I'm just going to let it cure. I'm going to put my silicone mat in a place that is well ventilated, and so uh, the fumes don't get anywhere, and we'll come back at that time. So it's been a week, and I poured on some extra lines because that's how I made this stirring stick even though I didn't have the silicone mat and so I just peeled this one off and I'm gonna try to get the other ones off I think my recipe for this proto putty is off I'm pretty sure I've been adding too much cornstarch and kneading it in too much and the point of the cornstarch is to make it so it's not tacky so you can still handle it but I've been using it as an additive, like you put dough in flour and actually mixing it up. And so I'm pretty sure it's been causing some problems with effectiveness. So now that I have that cleaned off, I can get started on the actual mold. So like I said, I'm pretty sure my amount of cornstarch that I put in is wrong, or it just doesn't work as well as I expect. But either way, we shall see how this mold actually fared. All right, it seems to be coming out now. I had a bit more overspill than I expected, but this should just pop right out because it didn't stick to the silicone. And the mold itself is actually pretty good, even though it's not quite what I envisioned in the first place. But next, and, and if you can see, it's actually still tacky. So maybe I did something wrong with the resin. But now I'm just going to clean it up with these uh, flush cutters and chop off the sprue and then sand down that edge flat. I ground this down. I'm pretty sure that I made it lopsided, but I just want to get this finished and sealed and then move on from here. But I have this grinding rotary tool and I'm going to carve out the numbers now because I've sanded them off. So here we go. All right, I have carved out the numbers, just freehanded them. I, I just want to finish this die, and then if I do this again, I will do things different. And so I'm going to ink this right now. I'm going to choose cobalt blue. I think that'll show up well on this kind of lighter blue, because it's a dark color. And then I'm going to seal it with this Mod Podge that we have, which is essentially Elmer's glue. I'm not sure of the difference between them, but we have it, so I'm gonna use it. And then it seals it kind of like this die that I made before. You can see it has a shiny surface. And then we'll go from there. All right, before I show you the final result, I want to go through some of the previous attempts I've made because I've done this four times by now. And I want to talk about a little bit, really quickly, about the differences between them. So this was the first one. It turned out strangely oblong, misshapen. It did get some of the details of the numbers, and so that was promising. But it's it's not a very good die. And this was used, uh, this was filled with old resin, and so it had this yellowing already. But the way I made it was to paint latex 
liquid latex around an existing dye, and then I also casted that in what is this called plaster, and so I had this mold that I could hold together and pour resin inside of, and so that was the first one. The second one, I ended up with this kind of pig foot, and we got new resin. This is still full of bubbles, and it was just clear. I didn't add any dye, but I did kind of the same thing with liquid latex. I painted around an existing dye, and then I cut it, and then I poured it with mold. But this still, if you can tell, showed up with some really weird misshapen properties because this is... Uh, I tried holding this together, but it's too flimsy. It doesn't have enough rigidity to hold the good details, but it also doesn't have enough flexibility to accomplish all the things that I wanted. So I determined that latex was not the best solution. And I went and did this protoputty idea already once before. And I got a fairly good dye out of that, but I still faced the problem of a bunch of bubbles. And so I actually inked these and after sanding them down, but you see there's giant deformities because I didn't get all the bubbles out because I don't have a pressure pot. And that's one thing I'm going to mention in the future. But these, I just did that same process, molded a single die. This was a percentage die inside of some silicone caulking. And then I cut it out. And the way that I cut this out meant that I could tape it back together still aligned because it ended up with this base. So it held its shape pretty well, but the way I mixed the resin introduced a ton of bubbles and I couldn't get them out. So that was this set. This was the D20 that I did. And then this final one, I did finish inking and I, after I sanded it, and I do like the contrast that the cobalt blue gave to this turquoise-ish resin color. And in the, one, in the one area, you can see actually some of that white chalk settled out and left this layer. And that's not entirely ideal. Also, I did seal that with the Mod Podge that I have. It might not be necessary, but it does give a good enough finish because I have all these bubbles. And that was after I carved out the symbols, each of the numbers, I went through all 20 of them, and then I gave this single triangle for the 20 face, just because it was easy and simple, and then I inked it. And I'm going to actually do a roll test to see if this is weighted, but I want to first talk about the things that I would do differently. So as I was fixing this up, you can actually see some deformities here where it's uneven because my sanding job was not ideal. I changed the size of some of the faces. So uh, this 16 face, for example, is not the same shape as the six face. It's a different size because I sanded it wrong. And if you don't have to sand down, that problem will go away. And so work better on getting the bubbles out. If I'm going to do this project in the future again, I think I will try using a an off-center motor to vibrate the mold with the resin in it and that will just work the bubbles free and have them rise to the top and that way it will get them out without actually having to put the resin in a vacuum chamber or a pressure pot. I'm going to try that and I might try that just with the molds that I already have without making a new one. Another thing that I could improve is the mold itself. So, where did I put that? Because I think the detail was lost a little bit since I used too much cornstarch. I folded it in, I kept working it in like it was bread dough, and it ended up being uh, a bit too low detail, and so I couldn't press it, it to itself. I couldn't press it together to form a good mold surface. And so the inside actually had cracks and places for the resin to form abnormalities, which isn't ideal. And so in the future, I may invest in getting two-part pourable silicone so that I can make a better mold because that will just increase the quality of the 
resin pores anyway. But I think that's all of the different things I want to address, and I'm going to do a roll test to see how well this die performs. Twelve. All right, I'm finished rolling the die 200 times, and as you can see, it is not equal, and in fact, the nine overwhelmingly won the statistic. And here's a graph of that if you want to see it. You can pause there. But I would attribute that back to the fact that I sanded them wonky. So the 9 is right here. And opposite the 9, you can actually see is the worst sanded spot. There's a lot of irregularities on around this corner, and the 12 ended up being the biggest face. And so that was the stablest spot for the die to land. And so if it ever rolled, as I was rolling it, I was an 18. But if it ever rolled and it found that 12 spot, it would stop there. And thus, we have an overwhelming majority of nines. But uh, I think this was a fun project, and I want to continue to do this in the future. One other thing is I actually made merchandise. I have a t-shirt that was inspired by one of the computer clubs that I'm in at university. And what we were talking about that day inspired me to make this graphic and then I submitted it to Teespring. And so you should be able to find a link to the shop if you would like to purchase that. So yeah, go help support this channel. That's really nice. And I'll see you next time.